Well, um, welcome to video blog number 58. Can't believe actually that I've shared so many video blogs with you. Um, looking back, what an incredible journey. Um, and it's kind of weird because I didn't think I'd be sharing the journey once I transitioned surgically. I honestly believed when I first started this adventure that once I'd shared and transitioned fully, I didn't really think that there would be more to share, but there is so much more that I want to share with you guys. I want to let you know um, how I found things. So, where are we up to since I last spoke to you? Um, I last said when I spoke to you that I had some issues post-op. Um, mainly that was with my bladder. Um, I don't think there's anything out there about this subject, so I want to share it because I think it's going to help others. It's going to make people see that actually they're not alone. Um, a lot of people do actually go through what I'm going through at the moment. And also that, you know, there possibly is a solution. Um, at the moment, I'm going through a thing called urge incontinence. Now, it's kind of what it says on the tin. Um, you can probably imagine um, when, blood, my, when my bladder is full, I can't hold it in. Um, my employer's been amazing. Um, obviously, I'm frequenting the loos a lot more than I used to. But other than that, um, it's not really that much of an inconvenience. Um, but I still want it resolved. Um, my eight week post op checkup, uh, my consultant did say that it was, it wasn't common. And also he said that, you know, they wanted to get me resolved. Um, since then I've actually been seeing my local hospital and consultants and stuff. And I have to have a urodynamics test in January of next year. So I'm still in medication. It's still ongoing. Um, I'm six months. So on the 16th of November, I actually will be seven months post-op. I'm now dilating, because people who watch this are going to want to know this, um, I'm now dilating every four days and it's still really comfortable. So I'm really, really happy with the progress that I've made on that front. Um, the wee issue, although it doesn't seem like that much of an issue, um, whenever I'm traveling anywhere, whenever I'm going to go anywhere, I have to consider where I'm going to go to the toilet and I never used to have to do that, so that's a bit weird. Um, a lot of my female friends have said, well, you know, if that's the price that you have to pay, you know, it's not really a bad price. Yeah, totally agree with them. Um, I'd still like it resolved though. Um, I'm hoping that with this consultant um, doing this urodynamics test that they're gonna find out at least what's wrong. Um, I've had a few other tests and they've been kind of inconclusive, so I've gotta go for this, which, um, Essentially what I've been told they do, if you want to fast forward, you can now, um, they will, with a full bladder, they will stick a urethra in and get empty it and then fill it up again and then empty it again and then see how it reacts. That's what I've been told. Could be wrong, so if I'm wrong, please forgive me, but that's what I've been told. Um, so although I haven't, I've, I've physically, fit, fully physically transitioned now, um, I'm not going to be doing any more surgery. Um, I do feel it's dysphoric still, which is still a bit weird. Um, one thing I want to say to you trans people out there who are thinking of surgery and everything else, um, it's an individual choice, of course it is, everyone's different, not everyone wants to have surgery. Um, but I honestly thought that some of the issues that I had pre-op would go away once I was post-op. Um, a lot of them have, don't get me wrong, but a lot of them haven't also. Um, I still feel dysphoric. Some days, um, you know, looking in the mirror, physically, yes, I look like a girl, but I still, you know, I'll clock, my, I'll clock myself in a certain light when I haven't got makeup on and stuff like that, and I, and I think I don't look any different. Um, I have to live with that. I have to get comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with my body being the way it is now, so I just need to give myself um, a break. I think more than anything else, you know, I've gone through so much in the last four years, both emotionally, physically, mentally, psychologically, that I need to give myself credit for how far I've come in such a short space of time. I think I'm actually coping remarkably well. And I think a lot of people, when they're coping with a difficult transition, no matter what it is, it doesn't have to be gender reassignment. It could be a new job. It could be leaving someone in a new, um, it could be starting a new relationship. Um, it could be getting out of an abusive relationship. It could be any you know, a plethora of things, but there is a kind of, there's a part in every journey when you kind of struggle for a sense of identity as to who you are, what you are, what you've become. Um, 
and you know so I know some entrepreneurs hate this hate this um, saying that they think that you know it's not about the journey it's about the destination um, I disagree I think that if you become too focused on the just destination you're not going to enjoy the journey or once you've completed the journey you're going to be so kind of um, yes you might celebrate the goal but how do you know how you've kind of progressed along the way I think it's important to be re to look back and be retrospective and to kind of consider how far you've come in these kind of situations as I have um, mainly the issues that I have with dysphoria is when people misgender me I'm still getting misgendered I think that's mental I mean why wouldn't I for one um, my voice isn't as um, Hi, it's a lot of um, cis females. Certainly, I haven't got the deepest female voice that I've ever heard. I know, you know, some cis women who have deeper voices. Um, I work in a contact centre. That's my day job. So um, I'm on the phone a lot. And quite often people will ask me what my name is. And I say Debbie. And they say, can you spell that? I think they're just checking it if heard correctly. Um, or, you know, I'll phone up someone and they were speaking to someone in the room. And they just say, I'm speaking to this gentleman. <laughs> Um, sometimes I let it go because at the end of the day, you know, they can't see me and if they did see me perhaps they would not misgender me but when it happens in person, I just, sometimes I just want to go, what the fuck, you know, excuse me, really? Um, I was at hospital a couple of weeks ago because I was having my, um, speaking to the consultant about the tests that I had so far for the post-operative issues that I'm having with my bladder and um, I was at the car park and paying for my parking one of the machines was working, one wasn't, so I went to this one, didn't realise it wasn't working, and this other couple went to go and use it, elderly couple in their 60s, and I said, oh, it's not working, you know, so, you know, if you wait after me, then you can use this one, and it goes, all right, okay, and then the wife turned round to the husband, and she said, what's the matter, and then he said, oh, this gentleman's just said that one's not working, now I had my hair down, I had makeup on, you know, I was wearing a bra, you know, so my boobs were quite pushed up and stuff and a skirt and stuff. And I thought, which part of me is male? I didn't really get that. Um, I struggled with that and I didn't say anything because it really threw me. And, you know, if I was in a situation again, I probably would say, excuse me, would you mind telling me which part of me you think is male? Um... It's one of the shittiest things I think you can do. I mean, people apologise when they misgender babies or when they misgender dogs. You know, if someone's walking a dog and they go, oh, oh, isn't she beautiful? And they say, well, actually, smell go. And they go, oh, I'm really sorry. But they don't apologise when they misgender a person. That really fucking frustrates me. Um, so, yeah, other, other than the misgendering every now and again and the issues I'm having with my bladder, so 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 happy so so pleased with what kind of I've made the decision that I have made um this isn't talked about enough either so I am going to talk about it the sex is fucking incredible to have the body that I should have been assigned at birth to now have that and be able to experience sex as a woman is bloody phenomenal um again if you don't want to hear a little bit about this then just fast forward for a few minutes but um yeah the clitoris oh my fucking word I mean certainly people <laughs> you know there is a joke this um some men don't know where the clitoris is um i'm a lesbian i've always identified as someone who is attracted to women and i am attracted to women you know that hasn't changed with my transition um yeah my partner and i have sex and it's bloody incredible i mean the that element of it is truly truly wonderful um i'm so blown away by it you know sometimes i'll just sit and i'll just cry just because of how wonderful that element of my life is so whilst there are some elements that are difficult and challenging still, on the whole, I've never been happier. Um, but it isn't all rosy, you know. There are times when I really, really um, struggle with my gender still um, in terms of how people relate to me. It's not that I struggle with me. I'm comfortable in me and what and who I am now. But I still struggle with the fact that people still, me, still refer to me as male sometimes and see me as a male even though I'm presenting as female. Um, if it was gender fluid and non-binary and stuff, I could kind of understand the um, ambiguity in that. But the fact that I am presenting as a quite a feminine female, it, I just, I'm baffled by it. I mean, um, you can't change some people's opinion and bias, but I just think that sometimes it just, it's so frustrating. Um, but that's my bag.
you know, even talking to you guys now about it has kind of helped me um, get it out and I find it quite therapeutic. Um, other than that, what's happening, kind of, I've struggled psychologically in terms of, um, I thought I would be doing loads when I'd had my surgery and I didn't really do much at all because I was in so much pain um, and I was struggling to come to terms with the, um, the chronic pain that I had while I was recovering from my op. Um, and because of that I didn't really have much energy to do writing of anything so I've kind of only just recently started getting back into that and there was a bit of guilt about taking the time out that I needed but you know in any journey there are going to be times when you're struggling when you don't know what you're doing where you're going um, when you kind of have to take a step back and not put pressure on yourself and you're going to have to say do you know what some days if I get up if I get showered if I do what I have to do in that day just to kind of keep my life moving along, then that's progress, you know. Don't be so hard on yourself. There are going to be times when you really, really are only able to do the bare minimum. And, you know, whether it's you're only able to go to work and then come home and then just, you know, have a bottle of wine or whatever it is you do to cope. But I just think that far too many people put too much pressure on themselves to be perfect the whole time. Life isn't perfect the whole time. There are going to be times when you're struggling that is okay. So kind of honour that. But you allow yourself to struggle, you know, it's not always going to be a time where you are going to be struggling. There's going to be a time in the transition, the journey, whatever it is you're going through, that you're going to achieve the goal and then you're going to move on to other goals and stuff. And, you know, give yourself credit for what you've gone through. I think all too often we become so focused on what we're actually trying to attain and achieve that we don't actually celebrate the successes along the way. I mean, in... A little over four, a little under four years. I fully, fully physically transitioned. I'm now with the gender that I had. You know, I now have the the body to match the gender that I've always had. It's incredible. Four years. I mean, fuck me. I've achieved a lot of times ambition when I put my mind to it in four years. Think what you could do if you can put your mind to it and just like not not put so much pressure on you. Um, I think any journey is fraught with um, struggle and certainly you learn more about yourself in the times of struggle than you do in the times of success. You know, none of us turn around in times of success and go, oh, that went right, I'm going to have to analyse that and wonder about that and look at my personality and make some adjustments. Of course we don't and that's, you know, human nature. But when we, when we struggle, we don't often look at the reasons why we haven't actually achieved what we wanted to achieve or why a certain thing hasn't turned out the way we wanted it to turn out. It's the universe's um, way of giving us the lesson that we need to learn on the way to being the person that we are. So I'm going to leave you with that. Um, I have been having some issues with my um, Apple account. I'm trying to get that unlocked and resolved so that I can then share my next um, blog with you. But if you haven't already, if you would like to receive um, updates from me, if you can please subscribe to this channel, um, you'll see notifications when I do um, update my um blogs and when i do share information with you as soon as my apple account is sorted i will be sharing stuff more frequently um so thanks for watching take care of yourself and be yourself no one else see you soon